Hello and welcome back to theCUBE. We're here breaking the signal out from the noise. Very noisy uh, place that we're in, in our little cubby here in uh, Google Next 23. We're proud to be here with wall-to-wall -wall coverage today and we're really excited to have two uh, other cloudy guys with us. With, I'm here with Dustin, Rob Streche with Dustin Kirkland. We're going to be talking to PwC, and I want to welcome you both on here. Uh, we have Kyle Bassett and Scott Petrie. You both are the leads of cloud and data teams at PwC, which again is, is a unique thing because we don't usually think PwC and think cloud and data. So right. we're going to really jump into it and unpack that. So welcome to the welcome to the cube. Thanks, Thanks very much. Uh, yeah, long time listener. It's good to be pretty <laughs> excited to be here with you guys. So. Yeah. Well, it's it's always fun when you can just dive in and understand and get into what is going on in the infrastructure, because you're, you're seeing a lot of what is the underpinnings. Like today, uh, again, at nauseum almost, we're, we're hearing Gen AI this whole week. So yeah. I think the infrastructure and how people build the infrastructure is just important. Uh, we just had two of the infrastructure folks, uh, VPs who owned uh, both uh, on the, uh, TensorFlow nice. processing units and on the uh, wow. storage and networking. So this is perfect addition and continuing on with the infrastructure. Right. What, are, what are you seeing from your vantage point at PwC, and what are you what are you building out that you're both leading those types of teams? Yeah, I'll, I'll start just uh, to say, like at PwC, we're we're known for the consulting side, right? For the the strategies, and we're known for understanding our clients' business better than anybody else, right? We're the the best sector-oriented partner that they could have. We know their business, and that factors into how we think about cloud and how we bring it all the way back down to how we do engineering. As we make sure that we're solving a real business problem, we make sure that we're we're delivering real business value to our clients through engineering, and some of that story gets all the way down to like what are the foundational platforms, products, uh, systems that we're going to use to build those, to make them nimble, to sort of help them on their transformation journeys and help them figure out how they're going to evolve their business into the, the more and more uh, technical days that we live in today. So that's, I think that's a, a key part of what our value proposition is and that's, that's led us to you know, who, do, who do we partner with, how do we build the best engineering teams that we can build and how do we show up in this way that's new for us as you mentioned. Yeah, and building on that, I, I think mean, you're talking about all the infrastructure, all the services, like I don't know, I think we've all lost count how many are available to us nowadays. You got to stay on top of that stuff, but for our teams, I think it's about how do you assemble those together? Like at the end of the day, we still got to do a lot of plumbing, we still got to put tools together, but it's, I'm excited that we used to have to like build systems and we'd celebrate when we got the system built, but now the conversation's starting at like, what's the business outcome of this? We solve that and then we work backwards of like, okay, let's go take the building blocks and let's put these together and leverage cloud services to take things to the next level. So. Yeah, and you guys are an engineering heavy organization. Uh, obviously, listen to your customers, dig in, understand that business, and then engineer solutions. Uh, digital transformation seems to be uh, an important part of that. Maybe you can just talk a little bit about what that what that customer journey looks like for, for your clients. Yeah, like for us, I think we got to continue to scream from the rooftops that PwC is leaning heavy into engineering and, and building a whole new culture of engineering. Like it's a different space and we have a lot of pedigree in, in the firm. So it's like bring the whole firm together. And Scott mentioned like, you know, we're known for strategy a lot, but what customers are asking for is they want to do the strategy, do the delivery, let's do some more strategy. I think the days of doing a lot of planning and then waiting are kind of going away. So it's building all those things together and our teams are, are really leaning in. Like they want to work on cool tech, they want to take challenges, but I think they're most proud when they look back and they say, look at the business problem we solved with engineering and then how do we repeat that for other clients so they can benefit from that. So, so connect that to Google Cloud. We're here at Google Cloud Next, huge event. Uh, there's a bunch of clients, potential clients, prospects, uh, but you know, yeah. connect those clients' needs 
leads with you know what what you can use out of Google Cloud. Yeah, that's right. Quality. We're building a, a large alliance relationship with Google on purpose because we think the technology that Google has to offer is uh, you know top top notch that we can use to, to deliver um, the outcomes that we need to for our clients. Um, when we look at how cloud migrations have gone over the last few years, there's sort of the, the lift and shift model and we saw enormous amounts of extra cost and not a lot of the benefits that people thought they were going to get. And we're seeing you know, a lot of opportunities and, and Google is a huge partner in helping us do that to, to save money by actually optimizing and modernizing to the cloud. And that fits, cl that fits closely with that digital transformation agenda, right? So how do you not just go to the cloud, but make new applications that function better for your business, run your processes better, give your customers better experiences. Um, and we're finding, you know, working with Google to be a great alliance to, to help us build out that, that the engineering end of that. You know. and so it's cloud and data, so I'm a data guy as well, so I, I love data and I think data is the heartbeat of a lot of the things that have been announced mm -hmm. here. What, what do your teams do from a data perspective? Are you helping uh, craft data strategies for your customers and data implementation so, hey, you had it all in these three different spots or what does that really mean? that you're helping with. Yeah, I can add on that. Like there's not a, I think what it's turned into is there's not a cloud project that doesn't have data. There's right. not a data project or a data and analytics project that doesn't need a bunch of cloud services and a bunch of automation and glue that together. So we've recently like purposely brought a bunch of our teams in Canada together because we, we really look at it like we're better together. And we've done a lot of the grassroots infrastructure work. I think customers have done well in that space, but where Scott was getting into is we really want to focus on like the beyond migration piece of the work. And we really want to like circle our, our thoughts and how we win around this beyond migration, which means like business outcomes. Business outcomes are going to be driven by data, there's no question. A lot of the, the exciting announcements we're seeing today is also, it drives a conversation back to like, I know we want to use all this new tech and hit the ground, but do we have good data principles? Do we have governance models on that? Do we have the right data? Is it clean? So drives back into like thinking about ML ops and some of the principles around that. So, yeah. I mean, it we you can't have one without the other, the way I would say it. I'm sure Scott would have something to add to that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we've built a full suite of data services though. Like you said, you have to go from data strategy to data governance to data engineering. Eventually you get to, you eventually get to the stuff people like to talk about, which is the data science, right? What do we learn? Yeah. What do we get out of the data, right? Yeah. But it's, it's a lot of work to get to that place. And, you know, in a lot of cases, we're helping our clients, you know, build business processes that gather and collect the data and more broadly than just what is the strategy for keep taking care of the data you have? How do you generate the data that you need to, to build your business in the direction you want to go, right? Yeah, as a product manager, it's music to my ears to hear you, you know, lead with business outcomes. You know, if that's the goal, then work your way backwards to, you know, the solution from, from an yeah. engineering perspective. Uh, is that, you know, is that always plan A? Is that generally how you run things? I think it has to be like the you know the big exciting thing when I look at the PwC. Obviously, we want to build engineering culture, engineering practices, and really drive. Like we're Scott and I talk a lot about just the quality of work that we deliver. We need it needs to be super top notch. And if, if our teams are proud of what they ship and they never ship anything that they're not proud of, then that that foundation is going to like build on that. And right. then. We can focus on those deep principles, but we've got like other other partners of ours in the firm that we can go to on the industry level that can drive those conversations with those C levels to say like, okay, what are what are we trying to solve here? And that industry knowledge that you know Scott and I have, we can we can like lean in a little bit there, but not to the depth that we can as a firm in some of our lines of service. We, so it's really like, for me, it's nice being able to have focus and have extreme trust to know that these industries are going to get solved for and the experience is, is there to, to push this along. Yeah, yeah. and it would, it would seem that PwC on the strategy side has always worked cross domain or cross vertical. Are you seeing that you're bringing that kind of expertise to the cloud and the, the data ops type stuff as well and helping 
different verticals in different ways, different yeah, than we expected. We're absolutely seeing that as we've stood up our engineering teams, we've had to decide which way to pivot the pods that we put together, right? Like what is the line of thinking that they work across? Is it a certain type of engineering service or is it a is it a certain type of technology stack? Um, but we're finding in quite a quite a few sectors where it makes sense for it to be a sector oriented pod where they're they're really domain deep in some part of that sector's business model. So if you know if it's a data pod working on a, a pharma company type of situation, they need that that pharma, they need to understand what the pharma business is and what it looks like to run research trials and how that business operates and how to manage that particular type of data. So they're they're a lot more specialized than maybe as the as sort of general engineering guys we thought we were gonna end up. Yeah. The only other piece I'd add to that is we, alliances are super important to us. So like, that's why we're here this week with a huge team and leaning into like our Google relationships and our like alliance partners. Uh, but at an engineering level, like our teams like to sometimes work cross cloud. Our customers demand it, right? So we haven't really always structured the delivery side of like per alliance partner. We've more done it from a capability or superpowers level. Sure. And then we ask teams to you know work cross like we cross our communities, like our tech communities inside of us. And I and then. The engineering community side is like, great engineers want to solve new problems every day. Giving them the same thing to do all the time isn't always like doesn't always stretch their minds. So we definitely have specialists for different areas, but we also want to just like always learn, always foster new knowledge, and our customers demand us to be pretty wide in the tech stack. Right. You went exactly where I was going with the next question, which was really around multi-cloud uh, and, and data. Yeah. You also mentioned just before we came on about you know your organization growing and including data and cloud infrastructure and those becoming much more closely uh, together. As you think about you know, the explosion of data, what sort of strategies are you, know, you employing with your customers to you know, help them manage that and then turn data from you know, a debt to a real asset uh, yeah. so they can build off of that? Yeah, I'll, I'll start and I know Scott's got an opinion on this. Like a lot of the, we need to, get back to some principles again, right? Like throwing all our data into cloud without really thinking about it or doing some work around structuring or just the quality of it, it's not going to be cost effective. Like let's start there, right? Like we're going to go to cloud. If the data if the data's in the cloud, we better be using it. It's, right. You don't want a data swamp. That's, that's <laughs> a data swamp, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I think it, it does come down to like how do you, when we get into like PI discussions with data, like you have to have, like our customers are large enterprise customers, security and, and and yep. safety is really like, it, there's, you can't compromise on that. So getting the governance model right, getting the strategy right, and then working with the business, because I think, back to the point earlier, the value has to go to the business, and a lot of the funding is coming from the business to drive these outcomes, so it's not a tech for tech play all the time anymore, and uh, like to your point, or what are those outcomes? And can you value those outcomes? And yeah. are, they, are they creating value for your organization is super important. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think I would just add to that, that setting, like you started to talk about the foundation a little bit, like setting your, e your application ecosystem on the right rails is incredibly important to your speed of delivery and to being able to get on top of things like uh, the data proliferation that, that we're seeing. I mean, you start to look at edge computing and what that's going to do for, for data as more companies deploy it in real ways. Yep. And how are you going to process all that data? You have to have the, the rails in the, in the right place to start with so that you have a smooth ride, right? Yeah. You've got to build those underlying systems that, that are the foundation of being able to manage it and not, not get behind it to the data, data swamp point. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get on top of it once you've already lost control of it. So you've got to build the rails. For and it's a balance, time. right? Like, because someone may say, well, until we do all that work and get it perfect, we can't go and move in all these new directions. But we, like, we, you got to do it at the same time, pick your battles and, and get value out of it. Yeah. You got to fly the plane and change the engine at the yeah. same time, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes, no. unfortunately. I, and I think you, you actually hit on a, a little bit of a point. When you were talking about having the right app, basis. Are you talking about the customer having it or the ones that you're bringing to bear for the customer and kind of... Actually, actually both. both is the yeah. answer to that question. <laughs> I would have said it depends because that's, that's the, the standard consulting answer. answer but <laughs> no, actually it's both, right? So we, we do, we do uh, build products as well and, and we build accelerators and other kinds of, of tools that we bring to our client as pre-built assets. Um, we have to have those in the right condition as well because you know we're on the hook for what we deliver to our clients and 
that manner, especially. And of course, when we build something for our clients, we want to do it the right way. Yeah. And if it's if it's our clients building it themselves, and we're kind of the player coaches for a little while, we want to make sure they understand how to get it the right way, yeah. right? So on the on the sports analogy, do you develop you know reusable playbooks? I mean, surely you've learned some best practices, anti patterns over time. So Absolutely. You, you parachute into a customer or client situation, and you know it's not the first time you've seen this, right? Yeah, we we have a I'd say a catalog of. We, we, we refer to them as engineering services, but it's just basically types of work that we do for our clients in the engineering space. And for each of those, we have like what we think is unique and differentiated method about how to get that done, how to get it done right, how to get it done securely, how to get it done as fast as possible, you know, not be too expensive, right? Like, but try to get it done the right way and make sure that, um, you know, we have learned from, you know, things that have gone wrong in the past, which everybody's been through those projects, right? So don't make the mistake twice. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that's the key. And I, I mean, uh, both of us having been at different clouds, but you know, when you started, you talked about the migrations and the lift and the shift, and I think there's, a, we saw a lot of people do lift and shift, and now, you know, we, we're not big on the repatriate, we're not big repatriates, or, uh, you know, <laughs> about repatriating, but what we're seeing is, from customers we talk to, or end users we talk to, is there's a lot of pulling it back, refactoring, and taking yet to another cloud. Are you seeing a lot of that, and in, in, you're being brought into kind of like, we did cloud but we did cloud wrong, and now we have to go back and fix something? 100%, I, I <laughs> Everywhere. think. Everywhere. Uh, I mean, I, I, you, we have to get in and do surgery on some of these applications, like that's what it's going to take. Um, we, you know, there were days of when we just tried to slam it into a container, right? And that, that added maybe a little bit more value than moving a VM to a VM, but did yeah. it really move the needle? I'm not sure because still have to manage that and there are the right use cases but we're going to move these apps like you're going to look for managed google services to do these things like there's like a, my point earlier there's a service for everything that's rock solid and generally global globally scalable with a security sure. model around it so a lot of those times is we need full stack developers now yeah like we just can't be like lick the infrastructure so upskilling our infrastructure teams that are good devs and learning some, you know, these fourth generation languages is really important. And then vice versa, the, the devs learning some of the automation work and tools, but yeah. we have a library of stuff. Like we're not re going to rewrite this and the days of being the consultant sitting in the corner filling your day, like we're going to show up and say, we've already solved this problem. And sure. customers are, it's nice to see customers opening up to say, okay, we've had this tool. Yes, we've been married to it for a while, but we're willing to let it go to go to a cloud native kind of tool and take advantage yeah. of that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's an ever-evolving universe of, of technology stacks that you could sit these applications on and sit, sit different customer experiences and so on on. Um, I, I think it's interesting whenever I hear somebody say, we did it wrong, so we have to change the technology. Because you did it wrong is what you need to fix. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, we've seen we've seen clients go from one cloud to the same cloud, but redo it to get the you know to get the modernization that they should have done the first time once they saw how it behaved. Of course, we see people switch. You know, we see people switching vendors around because they didn't like the method or the experience that they had. Right. So it's it's every day though. It's in every every. Um, client conversation that we have is, is exactly that. Like, how do I get this better? And one of the things that, that PwC has is a pretty strong capability that's not really engineering, even though I usually like to talk about that, is Cloud FinOps is, yep. is, a, is yep. a capability where um, we've gotten really good at, if you put a, a DevOps team to, together with a Cloud FinOps team, you can really change somebody's outcomes in the cloud. Yep. Just take apps and move them forward a little bit, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal to have the dashboards and the scoring of what it's actually costing you, where the, where the cost is coming from transparency the, there. The cloud providers do a good job of giving you that data, but not a lot of people use it very well. Right, and it's it's pretty confusing data to, I, I know having built a pricing model at Amazon, I can tell you, it's, it's we all had different ways of doing it, and it was very confusing to yeah. the end customer, which wasn't being very customer focused, but. So with, with the final minute that we have here, uh, Help us understand kind of your your goals here this week, your partnership with Google, and how you know PwC is really driving into the future. Yeah, for me, like it's about showing up, like step one, right? Like we haven't been here at this conference. This is always my busy week. Like it's so energetic being back here and seeing old friends, and it's a small, it's a big place with a small industry we've been in. So. 
you know, part of it is just we want to, we got to be out there telling our story, right? Like we've invested a lot and we're bringing in a whole set of fresh thinkers and we're merging that with a very talented, like, uh, set of uh, teammates in our firm. And being here and getting to see, like, the product managers and getting closer to the Google engineers and building up those relationships and trust. We've got a lot of clients here and um, sometimes our clients don't get a chance to get together anymore. So it's funny, yeah. we meet a lot, like we've <laughs> met a lot in San Francisco and, you know, we probably were all from the same city sometimes in Toronto. So for me, I'm trying not to overthink it. I'm just about, it's about meaningful connections, you know, getting face to face, talking about tech and getting inspired by all these new announcements that are coming to bear. And then we bring that experience back to our projects and our clients and then well, let's, let's get at it. That's kind of the adage, so. Yeah, you, you said a lot of what I would have said, but I, I, I'll just say building our story is probably yeah. the biggest thing. Like, it, you know, we, we know that PwC isn't the first thing people think of when you say cloud engineering. And so, you know, we're working on making sure that that message is out there with our clients, with our alliance partners, et cetera, right? Like, just want to make sure people know. So, you know, something like this is a good chance for us to get out here and talk about it. So thank you for that. Yeah, 100%. well, we thank you and thank you for joining us today. And we really appreciate it. It's always fun. To be people who are on the front lines dealing with cloud and data because it's so important and we get that uh, from being from our vantage point. Uh, and I think you can't do all the other neat stuff if you don't have that right. And like yeah. you said, working backwards from a business outcome, it, totally dead on uh, as we all agree. So thank you for joining us and stay with us. This is theCUBE from Google Next 23. We'll be right back with the rest of the team, I'm Rob Streche. I'm here with Dustin and Kirkland, and we got John Furrier and Lisa Martin in the house, and the rest of the Silicon Angle media team is out there getting the stories and delivering it to you. Thanks for hanging in there, and we got full more, four more sessions still to come with a wrap with an analyst roundtable. Looking forward to keeping you here. Thanks, guys. Thank you.